As a small business owner, I try to do things to keep costs down. And at my office, we've got some awnings that go over some of the windows, but they're in pretty shabby shape. And the building was painted last summer, and these have been sitting off the building for a while. I went in to talk with somebody about recovering them, and it was pretty expensive. It was more than $1,000. And I'm lucky enough to have been an upholsterer in my former life, and so I decided I was going to do it for myself. So with a few basic tools, anyone can do this. It's not rocket science. And so I'm going to just kind of give you an idea of what it would take to do it. Uh, you do need some basic tools, which most people have. Uh, I'll get to that later. But first I'm going to show you what to do to measure. So this material is Sunbrella material, and I purchased it at a local upholstery company here. I purchased the other things that I need to do. This has a trim around. This is, a, this is just a little skirt, and it has a trim around the skirt. And so I needed to put this measure. And so this is Sunbrella material. It keeps its color and shape and doesn't fall apart um, like most materials would. These, are, these awnings are actually about 14, at least 14 years old, maybe 15 years old. And while they're finally at a point where they're really needing to be done, they've looked nice for all this time. So that sunbrilla material is worth the money. It comes in 60 inches wide. And so if you measure what you're doing, you can draw out a pattern of where you're going to place everything so that you'll know how much you need. So on this first one, this is the narrow, most narrow one. This goes over my door. And so this material is 47 inches. So what I will do is take, is put 47 inches by approximately 40 inches. So I will cut a piece 47 by 40. I'm going to take these apart with a basic seam ripper that you would use. You, you can buy at any seamstress store, Joanne Fabrics or wherever. Um, I'm going to take them apart so that I can use these triangle corner pieces as a pattern. Now, on my original awnings, this is also 47 inches wide. But because I have 60 inch wide fabric, I'm going to be able to use the 60 inch wide fabric and not make this quite as large. That may say, sound daunting, but really all this is is one flat piece that if you have a staple gun, which I'll show you in a minute, um, and you put a staple on one side, a staple on the other, right in the center, you can just work your way to the, to the corners on both. Even if all you do is cut that as a square, at the end, all you would do is just trim it. So it's just this kind of an awning, it's just a piece of cake. So I also have, they have a little skirt, which I will sew. There's um, a little bit of trim on this skirt. So I purchased the sunbrella material. I purchased this, which is called Hydem. It hides staples, it hides seams that you don't want people to see. It's just a, it's just a pretty little cover-up. And I, um, and this binding for the, for the skirt I purchased. And really, um, and um, uh, thread. I, and so the only thing that I need for my sewing machine is a little bit larger needle because this is a little bit thicker thread. But any home sewing machine with this that is so lightweight, it should be able to go through it just fine. So I'll show you next what we need as far as basic tools and what I purchased. Okay, so here I am with some of the tools and some of the things that I purchased. Um, we'll start, I have a basic sewing machine. My sister gave this to me in 1977. So you know that if it's a, you know, it's an old sewing machine, you don't need something new and high tech and whatever, it, but it'll work just fine. You just need to have larger needles to make sure that you can 
that it, there's a big enough hole in the needle that you can put this thicker thread through. I also purchased pre-wound bobbins, but found out after I got home that they didn't actually work with the size of my bobbins. So that was, it, it, I was hoping they would, but, they, but they're not going to. Although if you happen to have a sewing machine with a larger bobbin, maybe these would. I would suggest taking them, taking them with, or taking a bobbin with you to the store. Um, I have a seam ripper because I want to pull apart the, just the seam so that I can measure those corners. I have three different tools, but all you really need is one thing. I have two pairs of pliers, and this is an actual upholstery tool that is for pulling things apart. But all you really need in this case are pliers. I have my trusty tape measure. I've got a staple gun that are very inexpensive. This one is just a Stanley staple gun that you can buy at Home Depot or at Harbor Freight Tools or wherever. And then I purchased, this is my, my uh, Thunderella material. I decided to change colors. This is my binding for the edge of the skirt. And this is the Hydem. So this is a little bit different Hydem than what was on there. I haven't been able to find that exact same stuff, but this is going to work just fine. So it's time to start tearing them apart and get going. I'm just going to take a moment to look at the construction of this frame because it's very basic. So it's just a few pieces. They're all screwed together and you don't need to disassemble them in any way. It's, and so even if this was a more complicated frame, even at that, it's still very easy to maneuver. It's real lightweight. It's only aluminum. And so we'll get to... All right, so I'm just using the pliers. I'm grabbing the edge of the skirt here. And there's a little trough in... There's this little trough in the metal that's just rubber. And so these staples have only been into this rubber trough. And so that's what the part that makes it the easiest is that all I have to do is staple it back together. Okay, so after getting into this, I will tell you that my best tool has been just a screwdriver. I, I found a, one that has a pretty sharp end on it and it's very narrow because these are narrow staples. So putting, I have my foot bracing the bottom of this frame so that it doesn't wiggle on me and my hand is holding underneath here and I just wobble, wiggle, whatever, the screwdriver underneath it on each one to where it's just popped up a bit and then I just pull them out with my pliers. And that's going to be the easiest way because if you pop them out with a screwdriver, the staples go flying everywhere and then they find your feet later on. The one thing that I will tell you for removing the item and the skirt, this tool that I purchased 50 years ago at um, an upholstery store that it's for removing staples and it's also for removing tacks and things like that. But getting it underneath the edge of that and wiggling that up, this was my most valuable tool. And I don't think these are more than $15 at an upholstery store. So you might want to invest in one of these. So I have the entire piece pulled off of the frame. And after looking at it really carefully, I realized that the edges of the original piece are sealed. And the edges of the new piece of material are also factory sealed. It, they appear to have some kind of, they're, it's, they're probably, they've probably been heated or heat treated or something to seal them so they won't fray. So I decided to change my tack just a little bit. I'm going to use, I will probably end up using a little bit more material than before, but I decided to turn this the long way on my material so that I don't need to do these seams. I'm going to do a fake seam. I'm going to run two lines of stitching on this simply because it really makes it look sharp when it's 
put onto the frame. And that's one of the pieces on this that I always thought made it look just real crisp. So I am going to re retain the two things, but they're not actually going to be seams doing anything. So I've laid this out on my piece of fabric. You need, ideally, a piece of chalk works the best. I didn't remember to get one. So I'm just going to use a pencil and I'm just going to trace all the way around the entire piece of fabric. It hasn't been stretched too much. It's, there aren't any strange directions on it. It's real, real straightforward. So I'm just going to just trace around it and I'm going to cut around that. I will sew in my, my fake seams and it'll be ready to put this part of it back on. And then I'll do the same for the skirt. <clears throat> okay, so it's time for a little bit of an update. And I learned a couple of things here. I've marked out my material. I, I sketched around the old pattern and I've cut it out because I know I want to put those two lines of stitching in. I folded this together and marked my center point so that I can come out here. I've decided to make it 44 inches across, or 44 inches between the two lines of stitching. And so half of that is 22. And so I'm going to mark 22 inches and I'm going to, to mark a little pattern for my stitching. One of the things that I learned was that Sunbrella material actually has a front side and a back side. So while I was working with this, there's a side that feels just like a regular woven material. And then on the other side, it's a little slick. And so I jumped onto the trusty internet to figure out what the difference was. And it turns out that the slick side has some rain protection coating on it. So this is my top side that I'm going to have showing out on top of the awnings when I'm finished. So I, you always want to work on the underside so that you don't accidentally make a mark that you shouldn't be making, that people would see. So I'll make my mark at 22 inches here. I'll make my mark at 22 inches at the top, draw between them, and stitch. Okay, so since I started stitching this, I've had a couple of false starts. The first one is that with a regular roll of thread, spool of thread, um, they're only about this tall, and they're set up to where they'll either turn because they're lightweight or the thread will come right off the top. But these are a heavy, much heavier setup. And if you have an upholstery machine, it actually has a tall spindle for the spool of thread to, to thre thread down because it has to pull it off the top. So my clever little device here, which is two plastic forks, just to where it pulls it up to where it can come off of the top of the spool easily. And I have a little bit larger eye in my sewing needle. Went and purchased that this morning. Um, the bobbin fit perfectly. It's working really well. And the only thing that I'm noticing is that it's just heavy material, so it tends to want to walk to one side or the other. And it's big. So I'm sitting back here. Fortunately, I have a foot feed that I can move around, and most sewing machines do, and so I kind of rolled this side of it up because I need to be able to get it through here and make it to where it doesn't accidentally fold underneath and then I stitch on it or something like that. So I've got it way back here, but this also gives me a good line of sight because I've got my, I have my lines drawn in here with a white pencil and it gives me a nice straight look right down here and I've just been stitching very slowly. So I just, that way if it starts to walk off to one side or the other, I can correct it within one or two stitches and it looks beautiful.
the white stitching is just gonna be the thing. At this point, we've pulled apart two of the three awnings, and this is one of the longer ones. On the one that's the smaller one that goes over the door, I decided not to do the white stitching because as much as I would have loved to have had that, I couldn't keep the material from scooting. It's kind of slick because of the rain, rain guard protection. And so I, it, it tended to want to move. When you have an upholstery machine, it has a walking top foot and that keeps that from happening. And with my machine, it just didn't. So I decided to just give up on that. I pulled all the stitches out and I'll put that together. Now I'm on the one of the awnings that goes over my windows. And so I've gotten a couple of staples in here. What I did in the beginning was I took both ends, put them up, went down to the other side and marked the center so that I would know exactly where the center would be, top and bottom. There's my center point right there, top and bottom. And I have started, I've put a few staples in here uh, after um, figuring out that what I needed was the kind of staples that have kind of a jagged edge on them. They're, they're, they come to a sharp point. Those seem to be working the best. And at this point I will tell you, absolutely you must have an electric staple gun. Don't buy the little hand pop, pop, pop staple guns. For one thing, you're gonna be dead before you, your arm will be dead before you can get it all done. But the other problem is, is that, that it has that popping and it makes it jump and you'll be pulling out staples left and right. So, go with an electric staple gun. This one I bought new today because my other one stopped working and it was only $30 or 32. And so um, it's, not an, it's not a big investment. And I'll go a little further here and meet you at the bottom end. Oh, one more thing. I put, I made sure when I cut this that the leading edge that's down at the bottom, I made sure that that was that, that finished edge from the factory. This awning, because it faces west, often gets a lot of wind, if, if we have wind. And that's where the worst part of the jarring is. It hits this leading ed edge. So I made sure to, I made sure to put that finished edge that isn't raw down here because that's going to make it stronger. Up here, you can see, I've got a couple of, you know, I've cut it and so it's got, it has different pieces and it has different little pieces coming off of it. And that's okay for the top edge, but the bottom edge you wanna have as strong as possible. So I'm onto the skirt now, and I need to stitch around the bottom of this. This is a, just a trim. The trim that came on the original pieces was woven, and but I wasn't able to get that. This is, um, this is actually uh, a, a plasticized trim. And while it works just fine on the straight, the corners are a little tough to do, but they've been coming out okay. And um, so I stitch, I stitch this down, make it look nice, finished edges all the way. And um, my machine is, I mean, it's a little tough for it, but with the larger needle that I purchased to do the um, to to do this larger thread, it's working really well. And my little jerry-rigged thing here uh, works really well to have the thread come up off of the top of this so that it doesn't bind. And so I'll take a few stitches here, and then I'll kind of show you uh, the other one that I've done. So this is, this is flat, you bend it in half and tuck the material into it to, so that you have, so that it's sewing on both sides and it's, and it's sealing that edge.
on both sides. Okay, so now I'm sewing that little piece over that I that I that I ironed. And I'm starting in on the stitching. I'm starting in away from this binding because it's just too thick for the machine. And there's going to be a staple there anyway, so it doesn't matter. The most machines have little marks on them kind of to give you a sewing guide. This is at the first mark, so this is uh, about a half inch in. I could do it a little bit further in, but I, it, it doesn't really matter in this case. Um, I just don't want to get it too wide. I don't want to run the risk of not being on, uh, catching the back of it. And also, the hiding is only so wide, so you want to make sure that that stitching is all hidden underneath the hiding. So I'm beginning in a little ways here. I'm at approximately a half inch seam. And So it'll come out like this. This will be plenty of space, even if a little bit of it would happen to show underneath the hydem. It's a nice white stitching. The hydem is white. You won't have any, you won't have any problems with it. And it'll make it really strong, particularly if the wind, if you have wind issues with the wind buffer. Uh, okay, so my skirt is on and I did kind of a line of sight thing here and tried to make sure that it was as even as possible kind of down the line of sight and then when I was down the front I did the same thing. I tried to do as few staples as I could because I've already got staples on the canvas and I'm going to be putting more staples in with the Hydem. And so as much as possible I tried to leave open spaces with the staples so that if you, because if you hit a staple as you're going through, if you hit another staple, then you're going to end up having to pull the top one. So I put an anchor staple here, and then I can split this open and start to staple down. I, I put this over the end so that it won't drop off, but also, again, I can kind of look at the line of sight. I can kind of make it even and make it as pretty as possible. And then I've got a staple here, a staple here. I'm going to put another one here. Pry this open. Whoops. Pry this open. Before I actually shoot my staple, yep, it looks pretty good there. And kind of keeping an eye on my line of sight here. It does, it has moved just a little bit. I will, when I put my staple in between these two, I'll try to even that out as much as possible. Something that I'm learning as I go on this Hydem, since it's the first time I've ever worked with it, it moves around quite a bit. And the best thing seems to be to, I, I measured off a little, uh, probably this much more than I was going to need over on the far end, brought it up, laid it across here, and I put a staple to hold it here first. Then I put, uh, I stretched it just a little, put a staple at that one end, put a staple at this other end, and now carefully going between each one of them, keeping this line just as straight as possible, and I actually have my husband helping me here with this. I'm holding the item open like this, and he's using the staple gun to staple in there. It makes it a lot easier to keep that nice, clean line because I can see where I'm going as I go, and it, doesn't, it helps keep it stable. So that's just today's tip. I want to do a quick recap here for a couple of reasons. One, to help you remember what you need, and the other one is that a couple of things didn't make it into the video, and I think that you'd need to know them. Um, so, first of all, the tools that you'll need, remember, are a screwdriver, a pliers. I would really um, 
suggest that you buy one of those little staple pullers because it will make your life easier pulling things apart. Um, chalk or a white lead pencil, a sewing machine, an electric stapler, and staples. And so in the end, I bought um, Boss Stitch brand staples in the 3 8 inch length at Home Depot. And those work the very, very best of anything that I tried, even better than the ones I told you about in the, in the video. Um, for materials, you'll need to buy uh, your material, of course. If, you're, if it's going to be outside, I would definitely go with Sunbrella or there's actually a couple of other Sunbrella type brands out there. They all work about the same. Um, you'll need to buy the material, the hydem, the little trim for the skirt, uh, and the thread. And then also, you know, a, a larger eye needle for your sewing machine. So, if you remember to take one of your bobbins from your sewing machine, take it in and see if maybe they have a matching bobbin size of pre-wound, pre that's really good. But you don't have to do that. I mean, I ended up winding my own bobbins. It was a piece of cake. So, I just wanted to take the lazy way out if I could. Um, remember that you'll want to remove the old material and use it as a pattern. Uh, make all your marks on the back side of the material so that it doesn't show when you got it up. Um, let's see here. Uh, put the factory finished edge at the front side. At the front side here, put the factory finished edge because it's going to be stronger always. And so if you get wind, it'll help keep it uh, from pulling apart. Uh, <laughs> One of the final sections um, that I didn't tell you, or that didn't make it into the video, uh, because the sound was turned off, um, we ended up buying spray glue, and it's 3M brand. It's the one that I've always liked. Um, we sprayed it on the back of the Hydem and used it so that because the Hydem wanted to scoot a lot on this lower edge, we used it to to make a nice straight edge on what we were doing. And so um, that just worked beautifully. You just spray it on the back, you give it just a moment, and then you stick it down and and you can pull it up and re-stick it. It just was, it just worked the best and ended up making everything nice and ni nice and even for us. Um, one last note, just be prepared that no matter what, you're gonna end up having to pull a lot of staples. Don't get frustrated, it's just part of the deal. Uh, you get them in there, they hit the aluminum instead of the rubber or something like that. It's just part of the deal. So don't let yourself get frustrated. When you're all done, you're going to be so happy with what you did and all of your friends are going to be wowed. So thanks for watching.